So, you want to get a depth pass for animation from Blender into After Effects so you can animate the depth of field later on in post and keep the image as raw as possible? I'll show you how to do it. Let's get it done. First things first, I set up a simple scene with just a bunch of cubes scattered around. I'll go to the top view so you can see. Here is our camera and here is the cubes. This will give us for some depth of field. So the first thing first, if we go into the compositing tab and make sure your use nodes is selected or you won't see this. And also make sure you've rendered at least one frame, which would be F12. Once you've rendered that frame, then you'll be able to see this right here. You'll see depth. Depth is not what you want to use. For a Z depth pass, which is what you use to animate depth of field later on, Depth is an internal for Blender. It's not aliased, meaning the edges will be super sharp and jagged. And depth is fine. It works in Blender for what it's intended for, but not for our purposes. So we're going to use a mist pass. So let's set it up. So I'll go back into layout, as you can see here. And first thing first, let's go into our view layer properties right here. And you're going to see mist. You're going to check that. And then next, you're going to go into your camera. So you're going to have to make sure you have your camera selected here. And then you're going to click the camera down here. And you're going to go to viewport display. And you're going to click mist. And what this is going to do, it's going to show you the line of our mist pass. And then next, you're going to go into the world settings, and you're going to see mist pass right here. And this is how you actually edit it. I think by default, it starts at 5. So you want it to obviously, the depth of field, to start from the camera lens forward. So you're always going to want to make this 0. And then next, for depth right here, this is the fall off. You can see it moving right here for our depth pass. You basically want to have everything in your scene. So it's okay if you go too far. So you don't, it doesn't be exactly perfect. You don't need to like line it up just right. Just make sure everything in your scene is covered. So let me set this back to um, 200. There you go. Everything in our scene is covered, as you can see. Actually, I'll even extend out even a little further than that. So everything is covered. The next thing is next. You're going to go to the compositing tab. Render out a frame. That's F12. Okay. Once the frame is rendered out, you are then going to set up the notes like this. Shift A. And you're going to search for an invert. Shift A. And then you're going to add a gamma. Shift A one more time and a file output. Perfect. So here's what we're going to do. First thing first, I have Node Wrangler enabled. If you don't have that enabled, go to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, and make sure Node Wrangler is selected. Okay, so if I hit Control, Shift, and click, you'll see the image. If I Control, Shift, and click again, it'll show us the alpha. Control, Shift, again, it'll show us the depth layer. Control, Shift, again, it'll show us our mist layer. This is our mist layer. I'll bring the viewer down right here. So the problem with the mist layer is it's wrong. We need to invert that. So I'm going to take the mist and invert it. Make sure you put that into the color, and then I'll view that. I'm hitting Control, Shift, and clicking. So this is what it looks like when we invert the pass. And then I'm going to collect the color into the image. Then control shift and click the gamma, and I'm gonna make this to 10. So basically, we took the mist pass, we inverted it, and we adjusted the gamma to get something looking like this. I always just put the gamma as 10 because we're gonna be using a linear workflow, and this can be adjusted later because we're gonna run this out with the 32 bit EXR file. So, next thing next, let's go to our file output. If this isn't selected, in, or also this arrow here, we'll bring it out. Select the file output node, and you go to add input, and you're gonna go to add input. And also it says PNG, we're going to make this open EXR multilayer. The difference between open EXR and open EXR multilayer is that open EXR multilayer will put everything into one file. So we don't have tons and tons of files going around. So I always use this. We're going to make sure we're at full float. And then now we're going to name our different passes. So first one image, second one, I'm going to change this to mist. Perfect. Hit return. And then we're going to connect the image into the image and then the mist into the mist. So now we're all set up. Well, actually, we also have to define where we want to save it. So let's go to where we want to save it. So in my case, I'm just going to save it. In my case, I'm just going to save it in my tutorial folder under render. I've already rendered it out, but you're going to save it there. And then next, we're going to render out the animation. So we're going to go to render, render animation. So it'll go through and render it out. Next, let's go into After Effects. In After Effects, we're going to click on this panel right here. By default, it'll be here. So the blue line is there. Control I, which is import. We're going to select that path of where we just rendered it out, in my case, to Toil Render. Select the first one. Make sure Open EXR Sequence is selected. Import it. From there, we're going to right click and go to Interpret Footage, Main. It always will assume 30 is the frame rate. That's wrong. I did 24, so you always need to adjust this. Hit OK. We're going to drag this into a new comp by dragging it right there. And you'll see absolutely nothing, which is fine. 
click on where it says 32 BPC bits per channel. Make sure that says 32. By default, I think yours will be eight, switch at 32. And also make sure yours says sRGB. So I think by default, it'll say none. So make sure you go to sRGB. Perfect, hit okay. Next, I'm gonna open the color IO plugin. Open color IO plugin, throw that on top. And also extractor. And you need to have these installed. These are third-party plugins, both are free. On my other tutorial on how I talked about linear workflow and how to get Blender's film and gamma into After Effects, I explained how to install these and where to get these from. So first things first, let's go to layers and we're gonna do image. That's just image, the gamma will be wrong. We'll go into the open color, custom, and then we'll open up our config file. And I explain how to do, you have to actually change a little bit of code in here to make it work. I explained how to do that on my previous tutorial on getting Blender's film and gamma in there. So make sure you watch that if you haven't done that. And then from here it goes linear to linear. We want linear to filmic sRGB. So this is a junk render, so it doesn't matter, but I'm just showing you that for reference. Okay, next thing next, we're gonna duplicate this layer. It's control D. And I'm also going to delete the open color because we don't need that, or I can just turn it off. Click layers, and we're going to select mist. Okay, I'll turn off the top layer. This is what we see right here. So next, we're going to take the exposure effect, and we're going to add that on top. Normally, you don't need to do this, but I'm just going to show you if you didn't get a good pass since we did open EXR. We have tons of data in here, and everything's adjustable. So by putting the exposure effect on, we can go to the gamma, and we can change the gamma. As you can see, and we can also change the exposure. So we can literally get anything we want. We have so much data to work with here. We can get any combination. So if you render it out, it doesn't look exactly perfect from Blender. It's okay because we have so much data. We can literally make this look like anything from here. The way I rendered it, I think it's fine. So I'm just going to uncheck that. But I just want to show you how you can edit it by changing the exposure and also the gamma correction in case yours wasn't exactly the way you wanted it to look. So it needs to look more or less like this. So you have brighter white in the front and it'll fall off to black the further it gets away. Okay, next thing next, select the layer and hit Control Shift C. That's gonna pre-compose the layer. Make sure you do move all, hit okay. We're gonna rename this layer by hitting enter and I'm gonna name this mist. Next, we can go ahead and turn this top layer back on. And then we're going to go to lens, camera lens blur, and we're gonna throw that on the top layer. Next, we are then going to go to blur map and we're going to select the layer we pre-compose. It's important that you pre-compose this layer or it will not work properly. And also if you adjusted the exposure, make sure it's pre-composed. Don't put it on top in there, it won't work. So then we're going to adjust the blur amount. Set so files, put 20. And then to adjust where it actually is in the image, we're going to use the blur focal distance. So from here, you can see, so I adjust it. Now the foreground's in focus. I go back, now the background's on focus. So that's how you adjust it. And then you can also animate it, clicking the stopwatch, click U, shows the keyframes, go down, move it, you get the idea. I actually don't use camera lens blur, I'll show you the workflow I use. This is built into After Effects, so I want everyone to be able to do it, but I'll show you what I use, I think it's much better. It is a paid plugin, however, the next one. So what I use, I think it's $100 for the pack, I bought it many years ago, so I don't have it, but it's right here and I use depth of field. And then depth layer, same as we just did before, mist. I'll turn up the blur radius to 20. And this one, you select the depth layer. So you click the target, and you select where you want to be in focus. So I'll click there. Now everything here, I'll actually make this up a little higher. It's like 60. See, there you go. And then if I want to say make the back in focus, click on the back. I think it's way more intuitive to be able to do it this way. So I want that one in focus. And I can obviously move this one around too. So I want this cube in focus. So I think it's more intuitive. And same thing. You just stopwatch right there to adjust it. And then move forward in time. And then we can just move it around, let's say to there. So that's in focus. So then it'll animate over time. So that is how you make a depth pass. It's usually called a Z depth pass, another software. I came from 3ds Max and V-Ray. So from there you use the V-Ray Z-Depth, but in Blender, that's not an option. And by using depth, it's not aliased, meaning the edges are jagged, it doesn't really work. So this is how you make an anti-alias Z-Pass that works for animation. Because there's other tutorials showing to make a Z-Pass which work for still images, but not for animation. So you need the anti-alias to work for animation. Also another little tip right there I want to show you, something that can mess you up is if you go into let's say our mist layer here, and we'll change our comp settings, 
You don't want to do this, by the way. And you go to 32 bit and you linearize the working space. Do you see how it just changed everything there? This is going to make it where our pass is actually going to be blurry. See how the blur is all messed up? So first of all, we're double linearizing, meaning because we have open color IO, we're already linearizing the workspace. And so this is double linearizing it. So it's making the filmic sRGB totally wrong for starters. And this is essentially just kind of like linear basically. But the other thing is it's going to mess up your depth pass. Let's see how it changes the dynamic. So that's all wrong. We basically don't want to do that. Basically tip is don't use that. So go back to our settings here, project. So don't linearize your working space. Otherwise you'll get some weird blurring in your mispass and it's going to mess with your focusing. You have some weird blurring and haloing that's not really accurate to your geometry. So make sure you don't do that. If you like this video, like, subscribe, and comment. If you didn't like this video, hit the dislike button twice and I'll see you around.